Welcome back to a, another episode of the For the Property Investor podcast. And we have a special guest with us today in our expert series. Welcome, Belinda Botsolis. Hi, Owen. Thanks for having me. No, nah, thanks for coming on, Belinda. And uh, been wanting to have you on for a while. We've known each other for uh, a couple of years now. And um, uh, would love for you to um, tell us a bit about your um, your story. I, I, I first came across you on, on social media, on TikTok and Instagram. And uh, I think you're the only property valuer that um, I know of that has any kind of of social media following um correct me if i'm wrong but um um it's um but yeah would love for you to share how you got started as a property valuer and then we'll talk about what you're doing now and we'll go from there yeah so i'm not the most popular valuer on social media we had oh. a lego master henry pinto so okay. he, yeah he's a season one winner so he's a valuer but he's not known as a valuer, you know, he's known as the, the Lego master. Um, and then I think we had a bachelorette. Um, she was a runner up with Honey Badger that season. She's a property right. valuer, yeah. So but but we, they're famous we, for other reasons. Yes, well, yeah. they fly under the radar. So then I've gone, well, I'm not going to fly under, I'm going to come above the radar and yeah. I'm going to be in the radar space and like, hi, everyone, I'm a property valuer and this is what I do. Yeah. Um, and I think you, if we... you, don't, you don't need to get onto any kind of um, reality TV series to become I'm popular. I make my own reality show. <laughs> <laughs> I turn my socials into my own platforms. So. It is a little bit. Yeah, if anyone's it seen it, but um, yeah, you, we'll be we'll be sure to tag you in all, in all of our posts uh, from here, so everyone can can um, uh, get all the benefit of your. Uh, very own reality reality show on your social media. Yeah, it's, so. they really should have a reality show for valuers because uh, you know you're in property. We you see a lot. You go into people's homes um, when you are in the in the thick of being a, a bank valuer, so to speak. You do five to say eight inspections a day. Um, and so it's eight to five to eight homes you physically walk into five days a week you know, um, 12 months of the year and it starts to get a lot of homes that you get into mm. and people and things that you see and you see a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that would make for a good reality show. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, look, I started valuing um, pretty much I, I, I did the, you know, the typical high school straight into uni, from uni straight into my first job as a valuer. Um, and I, I literally, I never looked back on, and I never really kind of deviated from that property um, valuation career. Um, I did move into tax about 10 years ago, meaning I became a registered tax agent. Right. Um, and so I moved a little bit, I'm still in it, but moved out of the mortgage space, so to speak. Right. Moved okay. into that private work, um, tax work, meaning yep. that, um, you know, anything for government work, tax work, um, you know, anything that was like a, a court instructed family law, tax depreciation. So I did move out of the traditional bank work, but okay. always first and foremost, a valuer. Right. You know. Can you explain what, can you explain why someone would need a valuer for tax purposes or family law purposes? So yeah. Basically, if, we'll do stamp duty. If you ever okay. purchase a property without the intervention of an agent, so let's say you and I entered into a venture together and we bought the property through an, an agent, right? We went to auction. Because that property has been exercised in the open market, um, when you go to pay your stamp duty, the ATO and the Office of State Revenue are like, that's been exercised in the market. That's market price for that property. Pay stamp duty on that price, right? Now, if then a couple of years later I go, you know what, oh, and I'm going to tap out, I'm happy for you to buy me out, and then we need to draw up a contract, so then I get out of my, you, I need to pay, you need to pay stamp duty buying me out. Yeah. This has not exercised in the market. So what's the property worth at the date of transaction? You need a valuation because right. there's no agent involved. Yeah. 
And that's why. So the minute there's no agent involved and it hasn't been for sale in the open market, a valuer needs to get involved because they need to set the market value. So that's a stamp duty. Because I might have said, hey, Belinda, I, I only want to buy this off you for a dollar. You know, um, yeah, we're, we're good friends. You know, let, let, let's, um, you know, I've, I've done other, you know, uh, good financial de deeds for you. So let's yeah. offset that by just me buying it off you for a dollar. So, um, and I'll throw the, in a movie ticket. Here you go. <laughs> movie ticket. Just, oh, just make make it a double. But... Make it a double. But, oh. um, it's um, so for that purpose, uh, the uh, office yeah. of state revenue will say, hey, that really isn't a dollar. We need to know what the true value Correct. is because we're going to charge you the uh, tax on it. Yeah. Yeah. So, they, yeah, there's no law on what you can transact the property. Um, so we can even turn around and go, I'm going to pay a million dollars for that property. Um, but if the valuation comes back less, they'll go, they have to go off that, that valuation, you know, right. I'm like, I lost a bet and the bet was you lose your half of the house plus a million bucks. So be it right. Yeah. Um, uh, expensive, uh, game of blackjack or poker. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's no, there's no law, but there is a law that you have to pay the stamp duty at market value. Right. Yeah. And same as, so capital gains, uh, is usually, um, if you've lived in a property uh, and it's been an investment, you'd like to know what the property's worth when you move out. And obviously it's not going to market. There's no agent yep. involved. An agent can't actually set the market. You can't really get a letter from an agent. Um, the ATO, you used to in the old days, you could get a letter from your agent, the ATO are cracking down and they're making it really hard now for people to use just a simple letter from their agent. Um, they're starting An to appraisal read. letter, we call it. Yeah. So be before, I think probably the last two to three years, and especially this year, they're really cracking down only because it's um, it's not a legal document. Yeah. And a lot of the time it's not based on anything, uh, mm. whereas evaluation is a legal document and there's sales evidence. It's a, it's a professionally prepared report. So yeah, um, you can try your luck with an agent letter, but I would say nine times out of ten the HR mm. will turn around and go, you know what, I think we should get evaluation done. Mm. So you moved away from the everyday uh, mortgage valuation into more your um, valuation by order for, for tax and family law and, and yeah. other purposes. Uh, where'd you go from there? I So there was a little gap. Oh, and I think it was kind of after... Um, we kind of connected uh, and, and met online. I worked for an investment company and they were the, they were the typical company that, oh, you know, somebody going, you know, I want to buy an investment property. I'm going to go to this company. They're going to draw up a bit of an investment plan for me. They have buyers agents that work for them. And then they're going to find my investment property. One of those sort of turnkey, yeah, yeah full key um, services. Uh, I learned quite a lot from there. They were a really good company. I walked out of there, though, after a couple of months going, I think I've learned what I've had to learn, and that's fine. Yeah. And I was just really kind of taken aback and concerned that their main priority, they just wanted to sell. Yeah. It was like, you're no longer a valuer. You're no longer a professional. All you are now is a salesperson. Just get the jobs in, get the – and yeah. I think the level of care um, of taking that client through the journey – it was very much like this is how you buy an investment property. You can't do it on your own. It's too big and bad and scary out there. We've got to do it for you. And I've gone, mm, actually, no, you can you can do it yourself. You just got to have someone to show you how to do it. Um, yep. And then I took, obviously, my skill as a registered tax agent and valuer. And my goal is now to educate and empower people to buy their own property. There's no reason why you can't learn that skill. And if you do use a buyer's agent, which I still highly encourage, at least you're in the driver's seat, Owen. It's like, well, I'm about to pay you a lot of money. I'm going to give you a really strict set of criteria as to what I want, not what you want to find me. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so from your many years as a, as a property valuer, you saw the good and the bad of what investors had been doing. And yeah. you knew exactly what would add value, um, especially from a bank's point of view and from a market point of view. 
um, and of what people have done during renovations or building and that type of thing? Yeah. For me, being a valuer is, I, I think, a lot of like an agent, perhaps in these investment companies, they, they look at property. I'll pick up my coffee cup because I do this a lot and I'll pretend that they always want to talk about the property and a lot of the st statistics relating to the property. And I always say to my clients, respectfully, I don't I don't really care about the property at this stage. Um, I care about the fundamentals, uh, the, the economics, the, the macro and microeconomic factors below the surface as to why this property is worth what it's worth. Because if you can understand that and you learn that skill, you can interchange that property with any property you want. You can knock it down, rebuild, yeah. renovate it. And if you understand the, the information below the surface, then you'll understand what you need to do to renovate it properly, how much you then you spend on it. Then you'll be aware if you're overcapitalizing. But if you just came to me and asked all about the property, you can get it really wrong because you don't understand what's fueling that property and why mm. that property is worth what it is. So I give the education piece because as valuers, we don't just assess the house. We assess the market. We assess the interest rates. We assess market sentiment. We have risk ratings in our report. So our report very much is 60% about the property and then there's a 40% complete market analysis. So there's much more than, oh, this is what it should sell come auction day. Okay. So yep. when you sit down with a client now who comes to you and say, hey, I'm looking to in invest in property. I need help. Uh, is, it, is it more about working out, helping them to work out their strategy? Yeah first and, yeah. and and then helping them choose the property or is it or is it just a strategy and then and then giving them the um uh the the know-how or the the list of questions to go out there and and to find the right property themselves i think a big gap in the market that i'm trying to fill is i'm my a consult or my services i want a very bespoke i don't I've, I've sat down with a lot of other investors as research. Like I'm like, oh, I'm interested in buying a property just to see how they do things. Yeah. And they spend a huge portion trying to sell me the property. We're investing heavily in Perth. Perth is doing really well. We're also buying a lot in Adelaide. Brisbane's on fire. And they're just talking to me about the Brisbane market. And I'm like, at no point have you asked me any questions about my goals or my long-term mm. analysis um, and then they're trying to maybe sell me brand new off the plan. This is a new house and land package and you get all these, you know, incentives to buy. I don't do that with my clients. I don't even, as I said, I don't even care about the property. There's 330,000 yeah. properties for sale right now around Australia. We're yeah. good. We'll find you one. Don't worry. Yeah. I need to know about you. Like how many investment properties do you own? How old are you? How long into retirement do you retire early? Do you want to be positively geared and, and live off the income? Are you trying to grow your wealth? So you're trying to chase capital growth. All these things are like, I don't know, what's the difference? Let's explain. Let's understand. I spend a lot of time on that. And then we work through the strategy. So I always say so this um, concept might be quite frustrating because all you want to do is talk about the Perth market and Perth, my friend made $200,000 in three months in Perth. I don't want to miss out. And I'm like, we'll get there. I'm not saying we shouldn't invest in Perth, but it may be the wrong path for you. Let's just put a strategy together. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm I'm really big on getting to the root cause of everything so then we can work back out. Okay. And um, so really every consult that you do with each client can be different. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so you, you might help them with, um, with choosing a property, yeah. um, but... Um, it, it might be more empowering them to go out there and do it themselves just to get clarity on on on, on what they want first. Correct. Yeah. Okay. It's, some some say to me, oh, I I want to renovate, I want to flip in five years. We just this is a stepping stone for our next property. Yeah. I don't want to make a mistake. I want to make sure whatever I'm renovating, I'm gonna get double my money. And that's then we work off that strategy. And then, we, again, it comes back to analysing the market. Sometimes they're like, I want to renovate, but I want to hold long term. This is for my kids, my grandkids. I don't never want to sell. Okay, that's a different strategy. We've got to tackle this differently. 
Um, others are like, I, I don't, I just want to buy something ready to go move in. Okay, well, we'll tackle that. So it's then working with the client um, and then making sure that we deliver what they're, they're after and helping guiding them. And sometimes it's showing them what they think they want to do may not always be the right path forward. Um, some of my clients, because they heard someone somewhere say rent vesting, they I have yep. to rent vest, that's the only way you're going to make it in Sydney. And then when we sit down and, and really, because I'm a bit of a nerd, Owen, I love numbers, data, facts and figures. And I always say you, you focus on the money first and focus on the facts before you focus on the overall airy fairy idea of this ideology might work for me because it worked for someone on a podcast I listened to once three years yep. ago. Um, and then you learn pretty quickly that that might not be the best strategy. For somebody else, you're like, I want to buy a home. And you're like, well, maybe rent vesting. I never thought about that. So we explore all options. Mm, okay. It's, yes, it, it's interesting. I mean, I've been in this industry now working with property investors for over 25 years. And it's interesting to see that diversity of services and information that are available now to, to clients mm. and um, to um, property investors and especially with the rise of the buyer's agent. But with it, with every, which has been, what, the last six to eight years, that yeah. it's really sort of, sort of started to, um, since it started to take off. And one thing I've seen, though, with, with the buyer's agents is the pendulum has almost gone uh, the other way where um, uh, they now have, have, in some instances, they've, they've taken... Um, uh, They've taken too much uh, advantage of the the yeah. control of the client and the trust of the client without and they've just fitted a brief mm -hmm. without really um, uh, that might technically fit a brief that the client has given them, but it's not really the right property for them or even a good property to begin with for investment. Um, and then all these other things come up that the, the client wasn't even aware of that they needed to be aware of. Um, so, so this is really that gap that you're, you're filling um, to, to help clients. Yeah, uh, I think one of your questions was at the beginning, starting my social media. That was one of the big drivers for me was yeah. to educate and come from a different perspective. Um, there is a big rise of buyer's agents, um, and I say buyer beware because you 25 years on, you've been in... in yeah, yeah in, in in this industry, uh, servicing property investors in one way that's, or another. Yeah, and that's that's a long time to say you're an expert. You, you know what you're doing. You've seen markets fluctuate. You've seen the economy do, you know, things. So going far back as the the year 2000 and we had that huge boom in 2003 and then it crashed and then you've seen things right mm. you've been in the game buyers agents um have come off the back of oh i used to be in marketing got bored saw my friend make some money now i'm a buyer's agent responsible yeah. for the most expensive purchase of someone's life mm. no real professional qualification other than a six-week course and now they're working under someone's license and you're handing yep. over not only seven eight not you know hundred thousand dollars you're also handing them fifteen twenty thousand dollars to find you a property yes That's a big big risk a big yes. red flag i've come from a very to be a valuer you've got to study three years at uni you've got to be two to three years as a grad and there's a lot of uh, professional um work that goes behind um what's the word i'm looking for uh professional um corporates behind us that govern what we do we've got the australian yeah. property institute we're heavily heavily um yeah co corporate governance i think correct thank you yeah um we're buyers agents uh that some of them are like cowboys they don't understand the market they think everything equal You've got $700,000 to spend. I've got a $700,000 property on the market. There's not much popping up. You better buy this, otherwise you're going to miss out. The client sees, oh, wow, they secured me a property, match made in heaven, hit it out of the park, next one. It just becomes like a sausage factory. 
um, yes. they don't understand really mm. what what is an investment grade property and that's the problem mm. I had and that's what I tried to do in my social media was educate and yes. say mm. you know it's like uh, playing poker I see you I hear you but I raise you here's my cards I got yes. the better hand because I've seen more I've done more I've got more experience and the thing what I do is I turn it around and I show the audience and I go this mm. is what you do mm. and this is how you do it I yeah. don't sort of hold it in. I sort of show my mm. cards and go, this is the right way. And I think the audience started to um, really resonate with that. Yeah. And, yeah, I think it's and, important. And, so, and, of course, need to say, not all buyers agents are like that. Uh, we both we both know and work with um, many good buyers agents. Um, but because a lot of new buyers agents have come to the market, yes, they've come from that out of industry marketplace yeah where they can use the same sales skills they transpose but they don't have that depth of knowledge and understanding of the property market like you like, yeah. like you do yeah i think i think if anybody is listening to this or watching this the biggest red flag i have with buyers agent is um not so much their experience because some really do have the right hmm. intentions so let's put that aside it's yeah. if you feel that they have an incentive. So if they're affiliated with a developer and they're trying to push yes. a product on you, so something brand new off the plan or, oh, we, you know, this is a new estate in, in Perth, we, we're pushing, this is a new, I say Perth a lot because it's, it's a hot market right now, um, and they might, and you feel like, oh, and they give you a sense of urgency and you need, like, time is money kind of thing. Yeah. If you feel a little bit pressured, if you feel like, out of, every 330,000 properties, why they keep pushing me on this one development? Why this development? Oh, there's a Bunnings. Oh, I don't care about the Bunnings. They always tell you, they tell you because there's a Bunnings opening up. <laughs> Everyone tell loves me the now, Bunnings. It's, it's, yeah, it, there's, there's not, it's not the Bunnings. It's not the Bunnings. But um, just I would say if they have more to gain other than just doing the service for you, if they've got other factors in the background, yeah. beware, beware. Okay. You brought up your social media um, uh uh, a minute or two ago and um how did you get started or what was the reason for you starting to um uh post this information when you were still working as a as an employed valuer um yes. what what prompted you to to start um this journey on social media i saw i was on tiktok owen and i saw a lawyer and i saw an accountant and i saw a, a tax uh, lawyer as well um yeah. And I thought, oh, there's professionals on here not dancing and actually talking facts, you know. <laughs> and then I remember seeing like a real estate agent talking about things and I saw a buyer's agent and I went, oh, I could probably do that but with valuing, like uh, talk yeah. about like a different side of things. And then I started seeing like those investment experts talking about like, oh, you know, negative gearing and positive gearing and depreciation schedules. And I went, mm, I don't really agree with that. I don't think that's the right like you should, really shouldn't be oh, speaking. Oh, you mean those? Sorry, those twenty-two-year-old uh, property experts. Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. Um, on TikTok. You know, yeah. This, yeah. This is a property we bought for our client in the back of Whoop Whoop, and they've got a great rental yield. And I'm like, oh no, 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 no! Don't, don't, I wouldn't be buying that. That's pr like it's not the. I'm, yeah. And they make it sound so clever and fun. So then I would come on and I would talk about certain things that people didn't know about. Um, only because I was like, actually. Um, I'm an expert, like an actual expert, like a professional property valuer. Um, I want to, I feel like valuers and other professionals should really be the voice um, and give advice. And there wasn't anyone on there representing our industry. So yep. I, that's what I was sort of joking at the beginning. I stepped from the, under the radar into the radar and went, cool. I think we should, yeah. But when I started, oh, and I was really, I don't know if you know this, I was super embarrassed to put my name on it. I was like, oh, my gosh, TikTok, um, you know. And I but did, then, I just but had, then you took off. I just had the value. I didn't even have my name. And one day my boss said, are you are you on TikTok? And I was like, oh, uh, who, who told you? How do you know? It's like oh, a couple of people have been like, I think there's a girl from your you're in, in your office that's on TikTok and he's like are you dancing I was like no 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 I'm not I promise there's no dancing there's none of that I'm just talking and he's like okay just don't don't mention our company I was like I won't I won't I won't I won't so yeah 
times have changed and now I get people asking me hey how do I kind of get started on TikTok but it's it's really changed I think people see it more than just the dancing platform which is nice Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's rare to see anyone dancing anymore. I, I say bring back no, the old don't. TikTok. Hey. Bring back no. the old TikTok. Yeah. Um, what about you, Owen? You going to bust out the moves anytime soon? Um, no, it's um, it's uh, that, you, you need the right music for me to get up and dance. Yeah, and um, and you 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 you'd probably be surprised what the right type of music <laughs> is. But um, um, yeah, we'll 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 save that for a. A night out um, um, with the, the whole team. One um, maybe a Christmas have party. An uncut version, hey, like one of those behind the scenes, <laughs> like the, the BTS, and it's like Owen dancing, and yeah, I'd I'd, I'd watch that. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll one um... follower, Owen. You got one follower. I'll watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks, Belinda. Um, and uh, one thing we haven't spoken about is um, you now offer um, depreciation reports. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, e- explain. Became... Explain what that is and why a, a, a um, investor needs that. So there's a big misconception that uh, only brand new properties qualify for depreciation. So anybody that's like, "What's a depreciation schedule?" It's basically a report that captures the depreciation and wear and tear of a building. So if you can get your head around how when you buy a car and you drive it out of the dealership, it automatically kind of loses its value. Um, But you don't physically pay the loss in value until the end when you sell, right? You buy it for 50 grand and then 10 years later you sell it for 15. Um, No one in in between was like, I'm going to collect $2,000 a year off you in depreciation. Um, if you use your car for work, the accountant just sort of rides it off every year, right? If you take that mentality and that thought process to a property um, and with the coffee cup, how I picked it up, if you take the yep. property off the land and just think about how your tenants use it over and over and over and over again, it's getting older, there's chips on the wall, you know, the paint's coming off, the, the carpet's being used, that loss of improvement and wear and tear gets captured in a report. The difference between a house and a car is the land that the house is on appreciates and it goes up in market value. But if we isolate the improvements from the land and just look at the the house, that depreciation gets put in a report and that gets claimed as an expense against your taxable income every year. So the way you claim your interest on your mortgage, your water rate, your council rates, your managed property, property management fees, you also claim your depreciation. Um, sometimes depreciation could be a little, as little as like five hundred dollars a year to a thousand, all the way up yep. to. Uh, the biggest one I've ever done was sixty four thousand dollars. Wow. A year. Yes. Was that a uh, commercial property or? No, it was a resident. Oh no, I lie. I lie. That residential was sixty three thousand on a six million dollar unit. Um, wow. I did two hundred thousand dollars for a property. Uh, $285,000 on a bakery because wow. they had a lot of ovens and yeah, they would do. Um, yeah, steam. They used to make sourdough and bagels. So there was like steaming rooms and, and rooms for the perfect temperature. So the bread would rise and yeah. yeah, all sorts of interesting stuff in there. So they got quite a lot. And that comes straight off the taxable income. Okay. But for your average sort of residential investment property, uh, yes, a lot of people um, talk about, well, you have to buy brand new to get maximum tax um, depreciation benefits. Yes. It is If you're buying something that's brand new versus something that's five years old, um, or say five to ten years old, because um, uh, that's usually sort of, yeah, people will keep yeah. a property for at least five years old. So if they're buying something that's, near new it's usually sort of five to ten years old it how much difference is there really between um the the depreciation benefits so something brand new five hundred thousand dollar build you're looking between fourteen and fifteen thousand dollars a year in depreciation and that that sort of um diminishes ever so slightly so i'll go from like fifteen and a half to fourteen to twelve and a half to eleven to ten it sort of diminishes down um 
versus something that's five years old. And the biggest difference is uh, anything that's not purchased brand new or you didn't install yourself, yeah. that's considered plant and equipment, it doesn't qualify for depreciation. Yes. So if I took that exact house and five years down the track, I can't claim carpets, blinds, cooktops, ovens, um, air conditioning, those type of items. Unless they need replacing, correct? Uh, and, 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 and you, you then buy them. them. And you've yeah. got a receipt. Yeah. yeah. And you've got a receipt. But let's just say you bought it yesterday. Congratulations, Owen. Beautiful property. Um, that 15 will probably shrink down to about $8,000. Wow, so it's about half. Yeah, but the difference is, and this is what people got to remember, um, I'm not the best in math, so I'm just going to use my calculator real quick. <laughs> if you have $15,000 in depreciation and say you get about $0.32 cents in the dollar back, yep. you're getting $4,800 back in your pocket as a tax return. Awesome. Yep. Thank you, AT, okay. ATO. And if you claim five and a half thousand dollars at thirty-two cents in the dollar, it's two thousand seven hundred and twenty. So my advice is to anybody listening to this: don't chase brand new and off-the-plan property for a difference of maybe two or three thousand dollars a year. You'll get back in your tax. Yeah. Okay, that's chasing the little fish, and that's what I say to a lot of my clients. Because you bought brand new, it's like a brand new car. You paid a premium for that product. You yep. paid to have it brand new. You paid for the developer's margin, all that sort of stuff, right? And usually it takes a while for that property to really start picking up in market value because it's already at the, the top of the top. Mm. Whereas if you buy something that's older, you can always renovate it, improve the value, and you're buying more for, you're not buying it for the property, you're buying it for the location and other factors versus just for the fact that it's brand new you could yep. be missing out on long-term capital growth big fish so don't be attracted by the sparkly little fish that are swimming around going look at me look at me have patience you're going like go marlin fishing get on the yep. big boat and sit there all day and enjoy it and just wait for that big and, and just don't get distracted by the little fish going look at me that was a so weird analogy but it worked. Sorry, it, it works. It works. So, so, uh, but to sum it up a bit, you, 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 the main things you want to focus on when buying is you, you want to buy for capital growth and for income, so your yield. Yeah. And if you get depreciation, um, you want to maximise it, yeah. um, but it's a bonus on top. Yeah, you know, even older properties that have been renovated qualify too. So yeah. you could have a home that was built in the 80s um, yep. and the previous owner, even 10 years ago, put a new kitchen, bathroom, painted a, a little pergola cover at the back, a shed, new fencing, all these things qualify. And that's what I do. I look at them and I'm like, uh, today it would have cost $150,000 to do this renovation, but I index it back to 10 years. And I say 10 years ago, it was probably $71,000. I'm just making these numbers up. Yep, yep. And you've got 40 years to depreciate $71,000 for okay. the next 40 years from 10 years ago. So even older homes that have been renovated, that's where you've got to get a professional to work it out for you. You can't get your accountant to just have a nominal number. Yep. Um, I'm a registered tax agent. I can't do your tax return. The same way your tax uh, accountant can't do a depreciation report. We've got different qualifications. Right, okay. Well, thank you very much for that explanation because I get asked all the time and it's just like, well, what's the difference really whether I buy brand new or old? Is it worthwhile? And it's just like, well, you know, you need to speak to your accountant or a tax depreciation expert. Um, but we, we've just got the answer. So I'll mm -hmm. I'll keep this recording and save it and share it with everyone. I'll give you one, one piece of advice, Owen. Yes, uh, anything that the government is giving you, please take it with both hands. So if the government is allowing you yes. to claim depreciation, even if it's 500 bucks or a thousand bucks, you pay for the report once. I don't care if you use me, use anyone else. Just get the report because you pay for it once and you just use it for the life of the investment over and over. And you don't pay for it again. You just keep using the same report. And if the government's giving you a thousand bucks back, you can claim on your income take it with both hands because they don't give much away. No, and it's better in your pocket than the government's because 100%. they don't really spend it wisely. 
Yeah, and I'm like a dog with a bone. I find anything to depreciate. Like, yeah, that'll do. That'll ten ten dollars there. It all adds up. <laughs> I better in your pocket than in there. So exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, um, Belinda, thanks for for being on the podcast today. It's um, we've been talking about it for a while, so I'm glad to have have you on finally. And it's, it's all it and it's always great. We have these conversations all the time anyway. So it's just like, you know what, we 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 gotta um get on a camera and actually press record and and so that we can share what we talk talk about um all the time with everyone else out there. So um uh thank you again. And if anyone wants to to find you, you're fairly easy to find, but mainly on Instagram is uh, your main platform, but um yeah. uh, TikTok as well. Yeah, Instagram and TikTok. So, um, again, uh, super hard to find if you just type in the valuer. <laughs> I had pop up. So, yes. yeah, Belinda the valuer, the value of Belinda, Belinda Botsolis, Belinda Botsolis the valuer. Anything in that combination, a little bit like a Rubik's Cube, you just keep clicking and somehow I'll pop up. Cool. But uh, we'll be definitely sharing this content on all of our social platforms and we'll definitely be um, including you and tagging you on wherever we can. And so if anyone wants to uh, make contact with Belinda to be able to use um, her services, whether it's for a depreciation report or for a bit of a strategy session of what to do with their existing property or one that they're looking to buy, yeah, uh, please reach out to us as well and we'll put you in contact. So um, thank you again, Belinda. Good to see Thanks, you. John. It's like two friends having a chat and I feel exactly. like people have the opportunity to listen in. So thank you very much. I appreciate it.